Now, the latest research into the provision of affordable housing in the so-called gap market in South Africa shows that it not only brings with it improved social and wealthy cohesion, but it's also an important facilitator of opportunities and wealth creation. Joining us now from Cape Town to discuss the research are the uh, University of Cape Town's Associate Professor Francois Veruli and Managing Partner of International Housing Solutions, Sola Proxinos. Uh, Sola, let me start with you. You are private equity investor. What makes the gap housing market an attractive one uh, for yourself? I think that's a really very good question <laughs> and very often we're asked that question and really w where you see opportunity um, for the private sector to step in is where there's a dislocation or some market inefficiency. And there are two things that have happened in South Africa. One, because of our apartheid legacy, we have a situation where many people have been denied the opportunity historically of owning housing. And for a positive reason, because we've got a growing middle class and urbanization, as any thriving emerging economy has, we've also got greater demand on the supply um, of housing. And there really is a terrible mismatch in South Africa between supply and demand of housing. We're lucky enough to have a very work, uh, working mortgage market, which many countries in Africa don't enjoy. So the demand is a really effective demand. People can afford to pay for their housing. But what has not happened historically is well-located, high-quality housing at the right price point has not been supplied. Mm -hmm. So just to put some numbers behind that, in South Africa, the 60th to the 90th percentile of household income have something like 600,000 houses shortage. Mm -hmm. Let me bring Francois in. Francois, you conducted the research. Now, it says the primary focus of the research mm -hmm. was to assess the direct and indirect benefits to tenants and owners of housing units Absolutely. provided um, you know, by the IHS. Um, of course, the big idea um, when growing uh, capitalist societies is to give people a sense of ownership, a sense of buying into society, and nothing does that mm -hmm. better than private property. Take us through the extent to which um, people in the gap market feel a sense of ownership, a sense of buying into a new mm. South Africa, um, and what has the research found um, with regard to that? Mm. Thank you. This is the actually the second research that we've done. We did it a year ago, and th this is the, the second time we did it with, with a much bigger sample. And I think it's exactly the point that you've just made. It's the property-owning democracy. Uh, to what degree can you underpin mm. a democratic system to to property ownership. And, and it is that buy-in which is so important. So really what we did this time around, we had a look at um, the units uh, that IHS is involved with. And uh, we had about, uh, what is it, 500 households that, that we looked at. And it really comes down to the issue that for many households in South Africa, a house is merely a shelter. Mm -hmm. And there are reasons for that. Uh, they don't have the title deeds. They don't see it as an asset class, something you buy or sell. And I think what really started coming to the fore in this particular study is property in its three roles, as a shelter, as a place from which you derive an income, your closeness to work, employment opportunities, and its role as an asset class. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's those three roles that we really looked at. And when we asked people, why did you move into a particular unit? Mm -hmm. the, the answer was fairly quickly to get close to a place of work, yes. to earn an income and to have an asset. I think that is what is one of the things that attracted me to some of the findings um, because it does speak to some of the apartheid spatial planning. We know that most poor people mm -hmm. live very mm -hmm. far from their work places. A lot of people spend their disposable income on transport. Sola, um, you are involved in this gap market. To what extent is the new housing initiatives that you are involved in challenging that um, apartheid spatial development um, and are we having housing developments that are integrated both in racial and social terms? Absolutely, and this is the part that I find the most exciting. Um, we have a large development just on the side of Soweto, um, off Main Reef Road, and that really um, is 
one of the greatest examples of the challenging of the old apartheid regime because Rudaput and Soweto are really being integrated through this Flohof development with a large arterial road going through our development linking meadowlands to, to Rudaput. And so we really are creating in this particular development a whole new community. It's mixed income, it's mixed use, um, very, very close to um, modes of transport, public modes of transport, and close to places of employment. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the big challenges, yeah. if you take a look just at the Gauteng area, that 21% of income goes to transportation. You know, if you take a look at this comparatively to other African cities, mm -hmm. um, we th this is very, very poor. You know, the next um, highest um, contender is Lagos at just around 14% of household income going to transportation. Mm -hmm. So we really have to drive down the cost of transportation and the way to do that is to ensure that houses are much better located. Mm -hmm. And it was the single biggest and most important reason people said they chose the particular housing to invest their biggest purchase that a household makes is into a house mm -hmm. is because of where it was located. Francois, Sheila, can I just add something? Uh, yes, no, go ahead, Francois. Could, could I just add something here? And I think the, there are two issues here. First, we've been delivering houses, certainly at the very lowest income, on the basis of what I've sometimes called 40 by 40 by 40. Mm -hmm. 40 square meter house, 40 kilometers away from the city center where you spend up to 40% of your income on transport. Mm -hmm. Now, that, is, that 40 by 40 by 40 is not sustainable. And I think the point that, that's been raised here, which is going to be the critical one, can we get enough land mm -hmm. bringing people closer to mm -hmm. the city centers? I think what the study also brought to the fore is that in the human settlement policies of government, as Sula rightly uh, highlighted, sustainable human settlements uh, comes to the fore. Mm -hmm. What it does show is that the private sector can actually deliver on government objectives um, in a fashion that gives all concerned uh, the required re returns. <laughs> um, and I think that by itself is of importance, that, that we have a policy in place where there's a view that the private sector can't do it. Mm -hmm. Cre with the right enabling environment, I think that we can deliver. Sola, what is the kind of uptake if you look at private sector players such as yourself? Are people seeing an opportunity in this market? Are private sector players keen, given the fact that people are very risk averse and that there's a lot of defaulting on housing, not mm -hmm. just in South Africa, but in developed countries like the States and, 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 and other places? I think that the, the fear of default or non-payment is very much higher than the reality. And what is very interesting is Finmark Trust have done a study where they found that in the lower income segment, um, non-performing loans are slightly lower than the overall market. So there really is no correlation between income and default. But what is absolutely true is in South Africa, institutional investors have not seen this as an institutional ready investment class. And so in our first fund, 65% of our investors were, were from North America and only the, the remaining 35% with South African investors. Now I think what we've demonstrated that we can deliver high quality product, we can create a social good, but more importantly, it's sustainable because we can give investors a very strong market return. Um, and I think that's what's going to keep the whole um, market robust and allow us to continue to do this in second, third, and fourth funds. Mm -hmm. Francia, I'm going to give you the last word. We're running out of time. Just in terms of the overall um, findings of the, of, of the study, um, to what extent are people associating owning a house with being able to use that as collateral to move on and to increase their ability to, to participate in the economy of the country? I think there are two important issues that, that, that derive, and the one which I do need to mention, and that is that the, uh, the housing sector is an important employer. And what we're seeing with the units that have been developed, there are up to 100,000 employment opportunities directly and indirectly that can be created. So that is the first point. And the second point, of course, is that we're starting to see a South African middle class that, has being, that is being offered opportunities to acquire a home and who are not denied 
the, the property market, which well, uh, for decades many South Africans have been. Well, that's where we will have to leave it, of course. Thank you so much. That was University of Cape Town Professor, or rather Associate Professor Francois Veruli and Managing Partner of the International Housing Solutions, Solar Proxenos, discussing their research on affordable housing and economic participation.